What's up guys, Jeff here from Mad Hatter's Reef and today what we're going to be doing is taking the nano tank, shutting that down. We're going to talk about why and we're going to take the fishes and the live rock and put that into the water box aquarium. That's what we're doing today, so let's jump into it. What's up guys, we're back with a brand new Mad Hatter's Reef video just for you. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. So today what we're going to be doing is taking the nano tank, shutting her down, and we're going to take the little nano fishy, put them into the water box aquarium. I believe there is one hermit crab and one fish in that tank and i have failed once again to produce a decent nano tank for you guys but i have found that i really want to get the tanks that i have or the tanks that i want to have at a place where i'm happy with them before i move on to another project so too many tanks too many problems let's condense everything and make it a little bit easier for me to make sure I'm taking care of it properly. Now the water box aquarium is doing really well. Um, it's been up and running, it's fully cycled. I was watching it last night and there was some little copepods running around on the glass. So that's a very good sign and we're doing well. So next week, what we're gonna be doing for a video is a little bit of an update. Let you guys know about some of the changes that I've made for that tank and get you guys up to speed. And then we're gonna get back into the episodes and then doing top tens and like what we always do here at mad hatter's reef so today what we're going to be doing is condensing some stuff and making life a little bit easier for me to manage so let's do it this is the current status of the nano tank and as you can see it's looking a little crusty um had a heater problem a couple months ago ended up grabbing this heater from down in the basement and just threw it in there and then really didn't do anything other than that. Uh, I do have the KPS going still. Really for equipment in here currently, we have the little KPS going. We have this really cheap Amazon heater. And on top we have the Eheim Auto Feeder. And this has been the current status of the Nano Tank quite some time. And it's time for a change. Obviously, um, being up here in the guest room that this isn't doing well so what we're gonna do is shut this down we're gonna take out the little clownfish that's hiding out in the back down there living in the darkness we're gonna put them in the light and give them a happy little place and i gotta find that one hermit crab um and i think i'm gonna take this live rock and put that into the water box as well because it really this is a pretty clean tank I'm not really sad to see this guy go really hasn't been getting the attention that it deserves and hopefully condensing everything into the water box life's going to be a little bit easier and hopefully everything will work out so these little two gallon buckets are pretty handy when it comes to reef keeping and i always try to have a couple of them kicking around i use them for moving rock acclimating fish dipping corals very very handy they're a little on the expensive side as far as i'm concerned uh, typically you can find them in the painting section at your local big box hardware store i do believe they're actually more expensive than your five gallon buckets but from a size standpoint uh, they're a little bit more convenient than most of your five gallon buckets so right here i have the live rock from the nano tank I'm missing one piece and we're gonna put that into the water box this is my favorite live rock that I own and that's why it was in the nano tank and hopefully uh, it'll look pretty good here in the water box
using this little guy was pretty easy. I just used this water jug uh, that I picked up from the dollar store. I use this in a lot of maintenance. It's actually pretty um, inexpensive and easy to do a lot of number of different things with there. I mean, you can have a number of them kicking around. And literally all I did was just put this in the tank, put it up against the wall until he swam into it, then tilted it up. Relatively stress-free for him. The only thing I did like is once I picked him out of the aquarium, you know, all his familiar surroundings were gone at that point. He kind of was darting around a little bit. What we're going to do now is, because that nano tank uh, was running a little bit warm, uh, as far as temperature, I didn't have a thermometer in there, but it is noticeably warmer than the water box, which the water box should be at about 79 degrees. So we're going to do a drip acclimation with this guy. But I do have a very detailed uh, video on drip acclimation and I am going to show you guys a brief version of it. But ultimately, drip acclimation for me is probably the best way to introduce any type of livestock into your reef tank. I know some guys argue the fact that the water in this container will become substantially cooler to what is in the aquarium. But if you're doing a pretty fast drip and are constantly pulling the water out of the bucket, uh, that temperature should stay pretty close to inline. And for me, drip acclimation is the best way to add fish. So this is my drip acclimation line. Uh, it's just some airline tubing with a valve. And then I took some rigid airline tubing and then kind of bent it a little bit so it made this. Um, so I actually can hang this on the side of the aquarium and let this drip and kind of let it do its thing. Um, I got this idea from my local fish shop. I went home, well I bought the supplies, went home and made about five of them and had them just kicking around so literally when I need one I just grab them and use them. I try to flush out the line after I use it so it kind of keeps it from getting all moldy and gross um, but for the most part um, they're pretty inexpensive to make and are pretty handy to have kicking around. So I have the hard airline tubing or the rigid airline tubing over the edge of the aquarium and when you can see that um, it doesn't go very far below the surface of the water and in an aquarium that doesn't have a sump um, that's going to be somewhat of a safeguard for you so it's not going to pull a tremendous amount of water out um, but if you have a sump it's just going to continue uh, to keep that level or at least if your system is designed properly uh, this level will be maintained and your sump will start to lose water. The benefit about doing this drip acclimation uh, today is when I added all of this live rock to the aquarium uh, there was quite a bit of water displaced in the sump so at one point uh, my ATO started throwing me an alarm telling me that there was too much water in the tank and by acclimating this fish I'm going to be taking out some of that water out of the tank that is displaced by the live rock that I added to the tank. This is going to serve two different purposes for me so hopefully uh, we don't pull up too too much water and get this fish in the tank. We have our siphon going. It's pulling water out of the display tank. Uh, that's a pretty aggressive drip. Probably gonna acclimate this fish for about an hour. Uh, right now the time it's about half past the hour and I'm going to remove water a couple times if need be and hopefully bring that water in the sump down a little bit. So from that water that was displaced from the live rock being added uh, this is going to serve two different purposes and kind of balance out the aquarium for me. So these are something that I had in the nano tank and the company sent them over to me. They're called Nano Rock, and I've looked at quite a few of these as of late. These products that are made from epoxy and basically are creating shelf-like uh, racks for your tank and they look most of the time realistic. Uh, this one is probably by far the best that I've seen out there. I actually have some in the 220 gallon, um, which I really liked at first, but when I put it into the tank, it didn't look that realistic. And it took a matter of months for that to kind of blend in with everything else. Uh, that's not the case with Nano Rock, and it's pretty interesting um, how individualize each piece is and the coloration it looks like it's very aged and has been in a tank for years until you turn it over and look at you know the inside of it but i just want to give these guys a shout out um, they sent me over a couple pieces uh must have been six months ago now uh, to take a look at and give some feedback on it and 
really like it um, if you're looking to add some corals and some interesting places in your tank uh, definitely take a look at nano rock i'll put a link in the description down below so you guys can check them out they're also on instagram too as well all right so it's been about two hours and what we're going to do now is use an old school fish net, scoop them out and put them in the tank. Uh, sometimes with fish nets you need to be careful with certain species of fish. If they have a spine in their gill plate or like say a tang has a spine on their back fin uh, that can get tangled in the net and cause problems. But Ocellaris clownfish tend to go all right in the net and we're just going to scoop them out real quick. Alright so he's in the tank. Uh, no problems in the transition between the bucket and putting him into the tank uh, came out of the net just fine and he is happy in his new home hopefully uh this tank works out pretty good for him he's done fine in the nano tank he's got a lot more space to swim around now he should be a lot happier and we'll look at getting him possibly a mate and see what happens all right guys so that is mr fish added to the water box aquarium build and we have successfully added our first fish to the tank even though i didn't have to pay anything for it because it was a fish i already had we shut down the nano tank and that is going to be stowed away for a little while and see if things change if i change my mind down the road and decide to open up that tank again and do a new build series on that because the nano tank build series has been so successful on my channel but we have found mr fish a new home in the water box and it looks like he is doing very well we just need to find mr fish a mate and he'll be very happy so that is it for today's video next week we're going to take a look at a in-depth update on the water box build we're going to take a look at everything that i've done to this point talk through it that's next week's video so if you're interested in that new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified when that video hits the YouTubes. That is it for today. If you guys want to check out some more Mad Hatter Reef videos, there are some down below. And I will see you next time right here with a brand new video. Yeah.